All right, welcome back to Car Mechanics Simulator 2018. We are here at the auction house. We're in the middle of an auction, actually, uh, and I'm gonna buy, well, I'm hoping to buy at least, this Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. I've never driven it, should be kind of fun. So we're gonna try it, we're gonna start the auction, and then we're hopefully gonna win. Oh my gosh, raise. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be expensive. I have 173,000, hopefully we don't get anywhere close to that. Oh my God, this car is so expensive. I, this was not what I intended. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to sell some cars. <laughs> oh my gosh, how much did we spend on that? How much money do I have? Hello, he hello? I have $16,000. Okay, and there's an SRT Hellcat, that's pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna quit, we're gonna go back to the garage and uh, I'm gonna sell something because I don't think I can actually fix this thing with 16 grand. Okay, yikes, that was a lot of money. You are a very expensive vehicle. Are you actually worth that much? You're worth 152K. What do we buy it for? Like just under that, like 100, 100 no. Like like that much, basically. Okay, cool, great, awesome. Uh, Cool, it's gonna be fun. So wait, let's see, what, what is this car? Okay, 469 horsepower, 602, 626 nanometers of torque. We've got a V8 Hemi. V8 Hemi, huh? Okay, look at that little guy there. 392 Hemi. All right, cool. I'm gonna sell a car because I don't think 16 grand's gonna get us there. Or we could just try. I guess we could just try and, and then we'll sell a car in a little bit when this doesn't work out. But the plan is going to be tear down this entire car, fix all the parts, replace everything with performance parts that we can, and uh, then see how much power we can get out of it and see how much we can sell it for. So hopefully it's a lot more than $152,675 with a restoration bonus of $5,725. Hopefully it's a lot more than that, but you know, no promises. The global body condition is quite good. The frame condition is excellent. The interior condition is excellent. So we've got that going for us. All right, let's get it up and let's uh, pull it apart. The wheels look a little bit not great, but it's fine. Okay, I've never actually driven like an, I'm trying to think. I've, driven, I've obviously driven like SUVs in the game, but I've never actually driven the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, we'll actually have to take it around the track and see exactly how it does. You know, SUVs, like I don't know how fast it'll be. It's all-wheel drive, obviously. Um, so we're gonna pull apart the entire front side of the uh, suspension here. We'll pull everything apart here, pull out the brakes. Those are gonna need some work. A lot of stuff in here is like, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good, but it's not, it's not 100. It's not 100% and I'm all about trying to get everything to 100%. So this is gonna be uh, a bunch of work. So I'm pulling, pull apart the entire suspension. Looks like pretty standard stuff here. As far as this goes, we've obviously got the, uh, the transfer case here for the 4x4 because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all wheel drive, so that's a little different, but otherwise everything's looking like pretty standard, nothing too crazy here. And then we'll work on pulling apart the engine once we get to that point. So I'm gonna get all this pulled apart and replaced, and then we'll come back and put it back together. All right, so I got all the parts fixed up and uh, repaired or replaced or whatever they needed, so let's get everything put together here. So front suspension, cross member C, Get that put in. We had to do a whopping 20 regular bushings and four small bushings. So uh, a ton of bushings for sure. Uh, we're gonna do tie rods on both sides, inner ties, we'll do outer ties. Let's get our sway bar B in, installed here. We've also got a sway bar B in the back. Everything's sway bar B, which is cool. The sway bar end links are also type B. So convenient, easy to remember. Uh, that was helpful when I was putting this out together, I'm trying to get everything fixed. So we'll do our tie rod, uh, outer tie rods here, ventilated disc in the front, suspension arms. We'll use a couple of those rubber bushings. We've cut a lot more of those coming. Seriously, a lot more of those coming. Brake pads. Let's get our bottom suspension arm. A couple more rubber bushings. Nice. Looking good. Hopefully we can sell this thing for a lot. I got our double wishbone shock absorbers replaced. So went ahead and sold the whole assembly and then rebuilt them with a uh, double wishbone shock, the front spring, and then the front shock absorber cap. So that's done. Got our brakes and calipers. Was able to just repair all those and get them good to go. 
Uh, wheel bearings are not repairable ever, so they always have to be replaced. It's kind of a bummer, but it makes sense. Uh, okay, our wheels, good to go. Those are also ready, but we're not gonna mess with them quite yet. On this side, let's get our knuckle in. And then let's hook up the knuckle with our outer tie rod. Upper suspension arm. Yep, yeah, uh, yep, uh, sure. And knuckle cover. Get our front wheel hub. And we can do the bearing in there as well. Got our bearing. Go ahead and do our brake. We can also get the axle in there. Oh, what? Front drive axle A. What are you doing, front drive axle A? That's lame. Axle, front drive axle A. Okay, should be good now. Good to go. Not sure how I missed that one, but there's always there's always something, right? We always miss something. Okay, get our caliper, cylinder, bolt it up. And it's amazing we can put the wheel on without the bottom suspension arm. It's impressive. I wouldn't recommend that personally. And good, okay. So we can do the back, we can do the wheels there. Let's go to the back side before we jump. Oh boy, no, not that, not that, no, 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 yeah, there you go. Uh, let's do the back side before we do anything else. I did also get the exhaust components uh, purchased, including anything performance that we could do there. Oh, I don't know if I actually put the front cross member in with bushings yet, so we should, you know, we should probably do that. Or, yeah, there might, there might be some like, you know, like consequences for not doing something like that. So there's that rear, rear sway bar B. Rear axle knuckle housing A. Get our wheel hubs and our rear wheel hub there. Okay. Have a couple more bearings on each side. And everything's gonna have rear drive axles here because we are all wheel drive. Uh, brake disc, regular non ventilated in the back. Pads, you know, calipers. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing everywhere, right? Okay, uh, we've got rear shock absorber A's in the rear. And then we can do our suspension arms. So we'll have three bolts here. We'll have a small, nope, regular bushing here. Let's think of a different one. Uh, we'll have a small rubber bushing that connects our rear suspension arm B. Couple small bushings there. Hooks that up. And we've got this cute little rear suspension arm, this little rainbow guy here, connected with a rubber bushing and a small rubber bushing. So this is kind of like the sporty uh, suspension in the game at least. Sway bar end link for the rear and we can do this rear suspension arm A. Good to go. So that's what that side looks like. Oh, we also gotta do our spring cap, our rear spring, and then the uh, shock absorber cap. Nice. Good. Let's jump to the other side, which is this side, which is the side I was on that I didn't finish. The rear axe knuckle housing A, wheel hub three, Hub, yep, yep, zip, yep. Bearing, let's get that axle in there. And then we can hook up all of our different suspension arms. What? I need more sus small bushings, seriously? Okay, well, I thought I replaced all the ones that I had. Not sure what happened there, really? All right, well, apparently I need more small bushings. Not sure, bush. Uh, let's get a couple of these for now. I'm not sure exactly how many I'll need. It's at least two. Okay. Happy. I know that doesn't need any more. So we're good there. And I think it's just the one here, right? Rubber and then a small rubber. Okay. Not sure what I screwed up, but I, uh, I screwed it up. So three bolts for this suspension arm. And then our regular rubber bushing here. I must have too many rubber bushings. I must have... Miss red, small rubber bushing. Oh, how many do we need there? Two? I don't even know. Let's just grab another couple more. They're eight dollars. I can. We can afford this, can we? Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, we can afford it for now. Maybe not for long, but for now we can afford it. Okay, small, small. Yep, we need both of those. I think that's it, though. I think that's it for small bushings. Okay, uh, rubber bushing here. We should be good, other than the brakes, and then we'll get our wheels. Well, let's figure out, oh, yeah, and you know, sway bar end link, yeah, that's important, and then we gotta do the actual shock absorber stuff. Spring cap, rear spring, shock absorber cap. Okay, nice, good stuff. Get our brake pads on, get our caliper on. 
and then we are ready for the wheel. The wheels are the same on all four corners of the car. 305, 35s are 22, so 22 inch rims here, and the same width and radius for all of them, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just go ahead and start putting them on. Good, nice. Fix up, I, so I, I went ahead and I pulled everything apart as far as the wheels and tires go, fixed the rims, and then replaced the tires. Because you can't fix them, you gotta replace them. But was able to repair the rims, all just fine. In fact, I was able to repair everything that was repairable in the car, I was able to repair pretty much, so that was cool. We should be uh, pretty good here. Let's just check and see, did I miss all these bushings? Oh my gosh, radiator, get out of my face. Yes, we need to get these bushings in. That's important. Not gonna be super great for drivability if we don't get those replaced. Oh, you know, and maybe like a, you know, a shock absorber over here. Ah, yeah, sheesh. I don't know. Might be important, and a sway bar, you know, end link. Okay, yeah, this car is not gonna drive well. Okay, oh, don't hire me as your mechanic. Just kidding, I'm getting it. We're getting there, we're getting there. Just taking a weird a weird route there, but we're getting there. And then we got the pushing there. So I think we're good. Let's get the exhaust put in. Uh, I was able to go with performance components for a decent amount of the exhaust. Not as much as I would have liked, but the rear muffler V8, that is performance. So we got a 3.5%. Oh my gosh, please stop. Uh, increase on each of those yeah so each of those is 3.5 percent the exhaust pipe b there's not a performance version sadly so we go from shiny to less shiny put those in we can move up to the middle muffler those of course performance versions of both as well as the catalytic converter so those are looking real shiny and super cool but then the front exhaust section v8 OHVG is not, but I'm gonna leave those out right now because I'm, I think I need them to be disconnected to take the, the uh, engine out of the car. So we're gonna not do that right now. Um, and let's actually go ahead and take off the transfer case because we're gonna prepare to take the engine out of the car because the suspension should be all good now. So let's pull the transfer case off, we'll pull the starter and then we'll pull the transmission and then we can pull the engine out of the car, put it on the engine stand and see exactly what we can do as far as performance goes for this one. Um, I guess we could also bring the welder over and fix the body. Not the body needs much. The global body condition is 99%, but we can bring it to 100%. It will cost us just as much as if it was in terrible shape, which is the sad thing about the welder. But we're gonna do it. $1,000 gets us 1% versus, you know, whatever. Oh. Maybe it was already fine. I don't know. It's a thousand dollar. Oh man, it might have been a thousand dollars wasted. Global body condition. Oh yeah, that's probably body panels. Okay, that's embarrassing. All right. Anyway, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Let's bring the engine hoist over. Let's pull the engine out, and let's see exactly what we've got here. So we're gonna go pull out. Good. And whoa, excuse me, sir, let me through here. Uh, install V8 Hemi, there it is, out of the car. While we've got it out of the car, let's look at the few things that are still in here. We've got the ABS module and pump, which the pump is repairable, the module is not, but we can get that going. The servo will be repairable, hopefully. The battery we can charge up at our battery charging station. The air filter we can, we can repair. The radiator stuff. The radiator, yes. The fan housing, I can't remember. Um, we'll see about some of these pieces. The clip A's are always annoying because you I think you always have to replace them. The air filter is <laughs> two-toned. I don't know why. That's weird. Uh, and that's everything out of the engine bay. Let's see. <clears throat> let me through what we can actually fix from that. Okay, so we can actually fix the clips. We can fix the module and the pump. Okay, I thought you couldn't fix the module. The transfer case, the starter, the servo, the base. Oh, wow, we're doing quite well here, actually. Was that everything? Was was that everything? That's amazing. We will need to get a different... Oh, geez, where am I going? We will need to get a different air filter because we're all about that performance. So this is just going to be a standard air filter, as it's called. Air filter. Okay. Uh... Yep. There are a lot of air filters, but this is the air filter for me. It's now red instead of honeycomb colored. Okay, cool, great. Uh, let's go and get the ABS pump and module back in. They're both 100%. That's neat. Uh, let's see, battery's gonna need to get charged a separate place. Servos, good to go. 
Love it. The base, I think we managed to repair. We did. We got our new filter in red. New cover fixed. It's not new. It's just fixed. All the clips we managed to fix. So that's nice. So let's make it really simple. When we finish up the engine, we can just drop it in, and the rest of this will all be good to go. The radiator we fixed. It's the nice thing about buying a car in the auction house. It's in good enough shape that you can fix like everything that's eligible to be fixed. So that's cool. And okay, battery to, if you don't want to buy a new battery, not that they're that expensive, you can just plop it on the charger here. It's at 69% and you sit here for a little bit and you kind of do a couple looks around the old shop and you come back and at some point it'll be 100% and then you can put it back in the car. I don't know how long it takes actually. There's not like, oh, I guess we're good. It let me take it. So I'm assuming it's good now. Hopefully. Uh... It, battery, 100%. Just like that. Boom. Magic. It's it's crazy, isn't it? Okay, so actually, I'm curious. What engines... Okay, so this engine... This car actually has no swap options. So we have to stick with the V8 Hemi. So we're going to stick with the V8 Hemi because I have no choice. So let's pull apart the V8 Hemi. I don't know if I've actually worked on this engine or not. I am really not super sure. Uh, okay, timing cover A. Wow, just pulls right off. Timing cover B, same deal. No surprise. Fuel rail D1. We're just going to pull that out. I'm sure there's fuel spraying in our eyeballs right now. That's fine. Throttle V6B. Okay. We're seeing a few parts. They're going to be, gonna be upgradable. This is the intake manifold V8 OHVG. Looks like it's made of plastic, potentially. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Might be. Might be plastic. I don't know. Uh, ignition coil V8 OHVG is a specific ignition coil. Two spark plugs per coil. Wow. We have two spark plugs per cylinder. That is interesting. This is a V8 with 16 spark plugs. Okay. More work for me. Let's pull all these spark plugs out. But you could also see it as more performance to gain because we will gain a percentage per spark plug. So having 16 will allow us to gain more performance. So that's that's fun. I don't. I had no idea that the Dodge Hemi engine, because it's, it's a Jeep, but it's a Dodge. It's a Dodge Hemi engine. I had no idea that it had two spark plugs per cylinder. How interesting so there's that wow okay we've got rocker arms v8 ohvg wow this is so different and this is all just going to come out as one big assembly interesting oh we do have push rods we'll have to pull out and they are specifically v8 ohvf push rods okay so we're gonna have a little bit of work to do to make sure we do this part right Get the right parts here. They're not just standard push rods. They're V8 OHVF push rods. We can pull off the exhaust manifolds. V8 OHVG exhaust manifolds. Okay. Looks like I need to do a performance search for V8 OHVG because a lot of this stuff is that. And then we can pull off our engine head cover on this side. And pull up that weird rocker arm assembly over here. Good, good. Very nice. And pull our push rods. Again. All eight of them. Maybe not. That one doesn't want to come out. It does. I just misclicked. Okay, good. It's kind of a small uh, click area there. Okay, pull the head. Nope, pull the exhaust manifold off. Only four bolts holding those on, which seems... Surprising. Oil filter is a V8 version. The standard alternator, which we can pull off and get a performance version. We will need to pull apart. Let's pull apart the actually the timing side of this. We got a belt tensioner here. We've got a serpentine belt B V8 OHV G, and then crankshaft pulley V8 OHV. We've got a power steering pump I4B. Actually, kind of surprising. Idler roller A over here. Looks like maybe another idler roller A here. Nice. Standard alternator, that's going to be upgradable. Water pump pulley here, held on with four bolts. Nice, good, good, great, great, cool, cool, whatever am I saying? Water pump V8 OHVG, that is quite the water pump assembly. Okay. 
Pull that off. And we're... Oh, timing cover. V8 OHVG timing cover. And then let's see what our timing chain looks like. Wow, single timing chain V8 OHVF. So that means we've got... Huh. Crankshaft, cam gear. Huh. Single cam shaft. So single overhead cam on this. We'll pull that out. And then we're good to start pulling everything apart. Let's get it slipped around. Pull the oil pan off. And then start taking apart the actual piston stuff. Okay. We'll get in here. V8 OHVG oil pan. Fun. All right. And then we can pull off our rod caps and our crankshaft bearing caps and get to the actual engine here as far as the oh the piston with conrad v8 ohvc so not just a generic piston v8 ohvc everything is so different this engine it's full of surprises i just get used to everything just being piston with conrad piston with conrad and then this one's ohvc piston with conrad it's it's so exciting Okay, rod cap, come on off there, bud. And we can undo our three crankshaft bearing caps. Yeah. Okay, nice. Good. And you, and then we can pull our pistons out, pull our crankshaft out, pull the block off, and then get to fixing everything and replacing it with performance versions of anything that we can find. So it goes, oh, yep, I gotta, like, you know, undo this part, too. So we got the uh, clutch assembly, the release bearing, the pressure plate, the actual friction disc here, clutch plate, as they call it, the flywheel. And then now we can pull our crankshaft out, and there's our engine block. Let's fix everything that we can, and then we'll see. So timing cover, a bunch of stuff, cool. I'm just clicking through it. We're just going for it. We're just going to send it. Yep, 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 yep. Luckily, everything's in pretty decent shape here, so... It is nice to not have everything in like super, super garbage shape. There's our new engine block. Look at that. That's not going to have a performance version. I'm going to just go ahead and buy a bunch of stuff off camera because this part's kind of clumsy and a little bit pokey. So I'm going to buy all this stuff off camera, get it all figured out, and then we'll put it back together with any performance parts I was able to find. And uh, we'll get this engine looking good as new. Better than new, really. All right, so we got everything replaced there. Uh, actually, not as much performance stuff as you'd hope. Maybe, well, I don't know. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. But uh, not maybe quite as much as in some engines, just because the V8 OHVG is... Uh, there's not a ton of, of, of uh, upgradable parts for it. But there's still decent. Like, we're able to upgrade all these pistons. The V8 OHVC with custom V8 OHVC piston rings, which are not performance, but the pistons are. So that'll help. Uh, the spark plugs actually will not be insignificant having a whopping 16 of those, but let's go ahead and get everything put back together. So, and maybe I'll even run into a few things along the way that I realized that could have been performance that weren't. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully I can afford it. I'm at uh, just under $3,000 left. So uh, <laughs> here's crossing our fingers, I guess, hoping that this doesn't fall apart we don't have to sell a car in the middle of this but it could happen it's definitely possible okay let's go crankshaft secured here and then we can do our rod caps nice nice uh this flywheel feels like it really wants to get put on that's a performance flywheel the performance clutch plate we'll do the pressure plate also performance and then the release bearing is not and cannot be performance so we'll do that Grr. Rod caps go in here. Let's finish those up. We'll get the oil pan put back on. We can flip the engine around and start to put the top end back together. And we'll see if I missed anything that could be performance. I don't. F I'll have to check the heads to see if the heads can be performance. The uh, crankshaft or the the rocker arm assemblies are not able to be upgraded. We'll do this oil filter V8. That's not upgradable. Oil filters are not upgradable in this game. Uh, neither is the oil pan, because there's no reason it would be. So that's all good. Let's get the engine flipped around. Uh, let's go this way. Wrong. Okay. Well, we're committed now. Let's rotate the rest of the way. Okay, there it is. And then let's get our engine head. Yeah, V8 OHVG. There is no 
upgrade for those heads, which is kind of a bummer because you can get some good power out of the heads usually, but there is no V8OHVG, V8J, V8I, V8, OHVK, OHVH, but no OHVG. So uh, sad, sad days, actually. I'm kind of disappointed by that. I'm also a bit surprised by that. So we'll put the standard ones back on. And then we'll put, oop, not that alternator, but our shiny performance alternator back on. And I should check the exhaust manifold V8 OHVG. I also don't think that's a thing. Sadly, it's just, it's just sad. V8 OHVD, H, yeah, we're, we're done. I, J, yeah, there's no G. G just gets left behind. I'm sorry, G, you deserve better. You deserve better, buddy. So we're gonna to put the standard one, the stock one back on. Wah, wah, that's fine. It's okay, this this engine has a decent amount of power already. So, you know, we don't need a ton, ton. Uh, we've got all new push rods in here. So we can do those. Camera's being a bit, a bit odd right now. Okay, get that on. Just slot, push around into each of these holes. And then we're we just waiting on, oh, we got one more here. Then we'll be able to put the head of the rocker arms on and then the actual head cover on. And we can put our, we can put our spark plugs in whenever we want. Oh, I should probably remove this fuel filter because that is upgradable. Uh, what it's worth it is upgradable in every engine in the game with the exact same fuel filter which is fun uh, okay let's go over here let's do our other engine head and it's weird that the head doesn't like bolt on it just kind of you just slap her on there and then you bolt the head cover on that's stressing me out a little bit but okay, whatever you say. Most of them bolt on, so not sure how that's working. Don't have to worry about warped heads in this one, I guess, right? <laughs> Ooh, boy. Well, you probably do in a, for a different reason. Okay, let's get the exhaust manifold on. Get our rocker arm assembly all put on. With it's six bolts here. Good, good. Nice. Engine head cover. Good to go. Wish there was like a cool aftermarket head cover that, you know, was like fancy looking, but there's not. No joy. Uh, all right, spark plugs. We got lots of performance spark plugs to go in here. 16 total in this engine, which is kind of kind of crazy. I had no idea. Guess they needed lots of spark. So two spark plugs per cylinder. Got it. And then the coils, amazingly, are not upgradable, which is super disappointing because usually you have a pretty good chance with, you know, the ignition system but not in this one so we'll just put the replacement factory ones back on to our nicer spark plugs each spark plug though 0.13 percent i know it's it's not a lot on tone it's definitely not uh it does help to have eight extra but it's yeah it's not super significant i don't think we're making up for like the lack of performance heads or performance ignition or anything like that but Again, this engine had pretty good power ready, so. Uh, all right, intake manifold. I don't think is upgradable either, but I guess now I feel like I need to check. I, I did check, though, uh, intake manifold. There are not a ton of performance intake manifolds, so. Well, sort of. The V10 ones are cool. Yeah, I don't see V8 OHVI, H, uh, wah, wah. nope, not gonna happen. Going back on with the OEM version. It's a very sad, sad time. Let's make sure we remember to take that fuel filter off. I'm gonna do that right now before I forget. And let's grab our fuel filter upgrade. It's red, good for 0.6%. Hmm, that's like five spark plugs, so. It ain't nothing. Oh, and then DI fuel rails are actually upgradable, I believe. DI? Yes. DI, D1. 4% each. See, that's significant. That kind of makes the spark plugs look like, oh boy, let's not do that though. Let's not put that one on. I always think it's going to give me the performance one first, and it, it doesn't. So, got to look a little harder. Okay, there's that, there's that. And then we can put these covers back on, which I was able to fix both of them. And they just kind of 
plop on. Ooh, throttle body. V6B. That actually... There's a good chance. V6B throttle. Give it to me. V6B. Where is it? Where is it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Right here. Okay, nice. Good. I didn't see how many percent that was for. How many percent was that for? 2.75. Okay, I will take it. Boop, boop. You know, I'll just take it because it's shiny, really. Okay, good to go. And let's get the front side of this put back together. Camshaft, V8 OHVC. We do have a performance camshaft, 2.75% there. Cam gear is not. The timing chain, of course, is not. That would not make any sense. Timing cover, good to go. Back on, all fixed up. Looking shiny and beautiful. Get our water pump, V8 OHVG. There's no performance version of that. It's a very strange water pump. Water pump pulley. Good, nice, great, cool. Got our idlers, please. Yep. There and there. Got our crankshaft pulley, V8 OHV, back on. Power string pump, I4B does have a performance version, 1% with this, we'll take it. Uh, serpentine belt, back on, and then belt tensioner, and that should be the timing side of things. That should really be, at this point, the entire engine. Let's put it back in the car. Let's put it back in the car. Let's really definitely put it back in the car. Okay, and install, install, and go away. Aha, okay, there it is. It's looking real nice. Let's see if we got, we got everything in there. Everything's good. We'll need to put oil in it. Um, I guess we can go ahead and put oil in it now. Now let's get everything put back together. We'll, we'll put it, we'll put oil and we'll put it back on the ground. The body's looking really good. I think we've only maybe got like the one door back here that needs work. So that will be nice and will save us a little bit of time. So let's get our transmission put back in. Gearbox, good. Because we did all of the clutch assembly and everything. That's already good to go. So we can just slap a gearbox over it. Starter, V8, back on. That's important. Transfer case, going back on. Four big bolts holding that on. We can do our rear drive shaft. Four bolts on each end. And we can move up and do the front drive shaft. Maybe if it'll let us come up here. There we go. Front drive shaft G. Everything's G. We can put on that front exhaust section VH08 V OHV G. Not upgradable, sadly. And that should be everything back together. We'll need to put oil in it, and then hopefully it should start. It should start in a perfect world. It should start, I think. It'll start probably, hopefully. And then we can worry about the little bit of body work that I'm hoping we have to do. Let's get a little bit of oil in here. There's our oil fill plug. And we're using sup oil, premium motor oil, the only oil in the game. It works for every engine. Viscosity doesn't matter. It's amazing. Sup oil. You know, that was a sponsor. Sponsored, I'm sponsored by sup oil. Okay, we're good. Good to go. And all right, let's move it back to the shop entrance and see if it starts. It looks good. The racing stripes, the, you know, it's looking good. Let's see. Does it start? Please start. Huh? 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 Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Seriously? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I forgot to do this when I did the suspension. Yeah, this is gonna typically cause your car to not start for like multiple reasons. So let's just, we'll just take a quick look here. Hmm, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Okay. What did we forget, everybody? Does anyone know? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, it's back here. Got any ideas? How about a fuel tank? How about with that fuel tank, a fuel pump in this you know, performance variation here? But yeah, uh, cars don't start without fuel, so that'll do it. It really tried though. You know, you gotta you gotta give it credit. It really tried to start. Okay, let's let's give that one more try. I think we'll do a bit better this time. Boop boop. Oh boy. Let me in. Let me in. Let me into this. And start. Look at that nav. Oh yeah, it runs. Okay, let's get out. Let's take a look and see how we're doing on car status. Everything is looking very nice. Yeah. Everything's good except for global body conditions, 99%. I think the only thing holding us back there is this door. So let's fix it. We'll paint it. And then, yeah, 85% instead of 100. Hopefully we put that back on and we're at 100%. It's interesting. The entire like, body was perfect. 
except for that pesky rear left door. Is that right? Oh, let me get the window in. That would be important. Okay, how are we looking? 100, 100, 100, 100. Oh my gosh, look at the car value. It's paying off $243,000 with a almost $50,000 restoration bonus. Good night. That's crazy. Well, I guess at least it was worth our time because you know it has been time consuming, so. Thank you, game. Uh, let's just paint it quick. We're gonna do a dyno and see exactly how much more power we make. It won't be, a, I don't think it'll be like a ton, ton. And then we're gonna drive it. We're gonna take the off-road course because I am super curious at factory. Let's do it. Wait, what, set current? Did I lose my livery with the racing stripes? That's fine, I don't really, I'm not really that into it. I don't have enough money to paint the car. No, <laughs> no. I have enough money for everything except for painting the car. Do I have enough parts to sell? Come on, please. Thousand dollars. Hey, we did it. Oh my gosh, that was lucky. Set factory. The cheapest paint job. I have a hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Beautiful. I don't even think that helped me that much with the restoration bonus or anything. Okay, let's move over to the dyno and let's see exactly how much power we get out of it compared to the factory power output. So the factory power output, it's gonna tell me. I don't need to look here. I always forget. I don't need to look because it's gonna tell me up here. Uh, 469 horsepower, 626 newton meters of torque, factory. Let's see what we got. I think we're gonna be, I don't think we're gonna be over 600 horse, but I think we're gonna be like mid to upper 500. That's my prediction. Maybe I'm being too conservative. Oh, I'm way too conservative. Oh my gosh, 706 horsepower. Dang, this is now officially a, uh, what is the trail cat? Isn't that like the, the, it's like the Hellcat engine inside of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is a trail cat. Oh, we just built a trail cat. Nice job, everyone. Uh, 706 horsepower, 911 Newton meters of torque. Holy moly. Let's go drive it. I want to see how it does at the off-road course. I love that this car has Belarus plates. It just makes it so much more interesting. I love it. It looks good though. Look at it. It's beautiful. All right, we're ready. I, every time I take a vehicle, whoa, listen to that. Every time I take a vehicle to the off-road course, it's like kind of disappointing because like driving physics in this game aren't that good, but we'll see how it goes. We got all wheel drive. We've got 700 plus horsepower. Really, there should be nothing stopping us. We're just doing like standing burnouts. What is going, what? Is what is going? Wow, it's like the front end. Wow, it is fast though. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow, it is it is actually very fast. So I've taken different vehicles here on this big climb and just seen if they can take it from like a dead stop right here, kind of like worst case scenario. I think this car, if it has traction, is gonna be just fine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just a non-issue. Wow, this thing's kind of a monster. <gasps> it's broken. Everything's broken. Wow. We're gonna hit this really fast. This is gonna be ugly. No, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. Okay. Wow. The ground is a bit choppy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. It's okay. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to go forward. This is actually a really challenging section over here. I've never really been in this. Nothing has enough ground clearance for this. I'm just bottoming out on just sand piles and rocks and this car is going to need to be repaired all over again wow yeah nothing has the ground clearance like even the jeep jeep wrangler i think kind of struggle on some of this but this thing has less ground clearance than that i think but it's so fast okay can it climb is this side steeper i don't think so it's not going to have any issues like we can literally start in the worst case scenario right here and it's just going to handle it. Nope, I was wrong. Oh, wow. This side is really steep. Okay, let's back up a little bit. From the flat. And go. Go, Belarus. Go. No problem. It's got it. Actually, it was a little difficult. Traction. Traction was not good. But we made it. We're up. We're down. We're going to wreck the car. Uh, yep, that's normal. Oh, I fell through the level. What's going on? <gasps> is this... I, oh, oh my God. Oh my gosh, I've never done this. This is, I've never seen anything like this. Wow. Um, 
Okay, well, there you go. That's been the test drive with the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT-A. I think it was a total success. We've we've officially um, made it through the ground. We are we're underground. We are now in sync with the mole people. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This has been Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. And uh, if you did enjoy this video and want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. And either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. I hope I can get out of here. See ya.